It's time for a Hollywood Connections Beauty Queen special. Now, here's Deidre. Hey, good afternoon. This is Deidre Veronica, Miss Florida Reporter Lifetime. I have a special guest on for tonight's show. He is an actor and a U.S. Army veteran. And his name is Jim Burns. How are you tonight? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. I see on your Facebook you go by Jim Burns, but your IMDb page is J. Patrick Burns. So which one would you like to be called, Jim or Patrick? You're welcome to call me Jim. That's awesome. So you've done some pretty great work, and you're a veteran. So you would just like to share with our audience like, about your story and how you ended up where you are today. Well, where would you like me to begin? Well, let's talk about the U.S. Army. How did you know you wanted to be a part of the Army? Well, my dad um, was a Marine, and he went in the service in 1958, and that was right before the Vietnam era, as you know. And he was very patriotic. He loved, he loved our country and all that it stood for and really believed in strongly in serving the country at least at least one or two tours, you know, before you go off into your adult life, unless you wanted to make it a career. And I wanted to go in the military after college, and he wouldn't let me. He wanted me to go to graduate school first because he always wanted to go to graduate school but never could. He had served six years. Yeah. And... Um, he died when I was 25, and I, was, I went to graduate school, became an occupational therapist, graduated in 1998, and I was liking the career but not loving it at the time, and I ended, I ended up um, talking to a recruiter, and keep in mind, this is pre-9-11, so the world was a little different. There was no... Um, real active go to war or global war on terror yet. And I could not enlist as an occupational therapist. So I put it off. And then I decided I was 20, 28 years old and the cutoff age was 29. And it was like either now or never. And I, I'll never forget it. On my lunch hour one day, I just drove into the recruiter's office and offered to enlist, and the rest is history. And within a few months, I was boarding the plane on 29 May of 2001, and I went to Fort Benning, Georgia, and they made me a combat engineer, and I have to tell you, I loved it. I absolutely, mm -hmm. and I never, I never regretted it. Never regretted it. That's awesome. You're yep. kind of following your father's footsteps. And, and yeah, and my, and my older brother was in the Army, too. I forgot to mention him. And he did, like, two years in the Army and then became a deputy sheriff. And so we it's just a family of public service. That's so cool. We definitely appreciate your service. I always, when I see a police officer, Army veteran, I'm so thankful for them doing what they're doing. So we definitely appreciate it. Well, thank you. It. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Thank you for asking. Yeah. So what would you say was, like, the biggest life lesson you've learned from serving? The biggest life lesson I learned from serving is you have to be a good listener. You have to listen to people. You have to uh, know when to stop talking and make eye contact with people when they're talking to you because there's so much nonverbal communication. Nonverbal communication is much more powerful than verbal. You can sell a car with what you say, but not with your eyes. Oh, wow. And, okay. and so I, I think, now I had some hard lessons with that, but I think that's one life lesson is learning how to be a good listener. And we don't emphasize that enough in our society, I don't think. No, that's definitely really great because most people are like looking down at their phones and when someone's trying to talk to them, especially at restaurants. So making yeah. eye contact is like a huge thing, especially in, in our technical world. Um, I agree. But, I have a question for you real quick, if you don't mind. Yeah. 
I've got my ear pods on. Am I allowed to put you on speaker and so that the people I'm with can listen to? Or um, you might not pick up on the radio. You might oh, have okay. some echoing. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Oh no, it's okay. I want to do it right. I want to do it right. So thank you. No what problem. is your what, 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 what? I'm in what? North. I'm in uh, Tennessee right now. What? What? What station is this again? It's. This is 106.1 FM and AM 1340 here in Clearwater. 106.1 FM in Clearwater. That's wonderful. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. We'll definitely send you the interview after so you can have the full audio. Oh, cool. And so I want to know, how did you decide to become an actor? Well, excellent question. Well, uh, in fact, I was just discussing this uh, well, with an old college friend tonight. I grew up in Catholic schools. And when you grow up, you know, in a Catholic church, singing is heavily emphasized. So when I started out as a singer, we're always singing hymns. And when you go to Catholic school, they expect the students to lead the singing. And growing up, sometimes you would take turns cantering or leading the hymns. Like you would literally get up on the altar or go by the microphone. And it wasn't unusual for one of us to take to do our part and lead a congregation of students singing. And um, so, and then as I got older and I started working, and then I would have, you know, normal work stress or whatever, I always enjoyed singing in a choir at church because it was a good stress reliever. And then as I got into my 40s, I... um, I had gotten gotten a, a divorce, and I wanted to do something different, something new, like maybe take golf lessons, mm-hmm. or take an art class, or link up with a personal trainer, you know, just like life improvement. And I was singing more locally. I was doing cantering, and I was doing military events like the National Anthem, or singing for funerals or whatnot. And I wanted to get into some voiceover work. And I signed up to take a voiceover class, but it was in combination with acting. And I thought, well, that might be just a nice bonus. So I just did it. And I found I was actually pretty good at it. I actually enjoyed doing the monologue. And my acting coach said, have you ever thought about auditioning? And I just, I kind of laughed. I thought, oh, this isn't going to lead to anything, and it actually did. And I actually got picked up for a couple movies, and uh, some. I've got some voiceover projects that I'm working on as we speak, and I love it. I love the expression. I love being creative and just sharing ideas with people, and it's just been an amazing experience. And you know, when I said the life lesson about learning how to listen Mm -hmm. when you're on a set or when you are doing a voiceover you have to know how to listen if you don't listen well you won't thrive so that's it all comes together that's awesome that's great that you can try something new and then you become super successful in it and what what's that what's been like a really cool experience you've had on the movie set i would say that the really interesting part about being on a movie set is you get coached as you perform the best thing you can do as an actor is know your line make sure that you study ahead of time know what the story is about if you're reenacting a play or a movie, make sure you read the script, know the story, know the plot. But then whatever your lines are, the best thing you can do as a team player is not struggle with your lines. Because as you start to perform, you have a director. And sometimes they might even have an acting coach there, the cinematographer. They're all giving you direction and helping you improve and make it better. So you want to be as best prepared as you can be so that you can take the direction and take the cueing. And I have to tell you, it's so much fun. 
I love it. Mm-hmm. I love yeah. it when someone is like, you know, have their index and their middle finger and they're pointing them at you and they're going three, two, one. At, you know, it's fun. It is so much fun. That's so cool. And it's so interesting that you say that, like, to know your lines and all these things. I, I love to watch the bloopers in movies. I, I know. It's it. really funny. You know, and, and they're sometimes, I mean, sometimes they're not funny at the time, but then when you think back, you're right. You're right. Yeah, that's so cool. So um, are you going to the International Christian Film and Music Festival this year? You know, I, I'm not, but I am going to do the National Pastoral Musicians Conference in the yeah. summer. I've done three of those, and they have a, a canter symposium there where you get coached on your singing and your performance and how well you present yourself. So that one I'm doing, NPM. That sounds awesome. So. Uh, for for singing, what do you like the most about singing? Like, how do you prepare yourself to perform and sing a song? Well, I drink a lot of tea, which I am tonight. And the best thing is uh, eat healthy and get plenty of sleep. You want to make sure you're well-rested, good nutrition. You also like acting. You want to practice ahead of time. You want to be familiar with the music. You know, one of the one of the blessings of performing in today's society is YouTube, because you know there are so many old performances, or even I'm not even talking famous ones. I'm talking, you know, so many professors now uh, of theater and music will put monologues on YouTube, and they will film themselves giving directions. I mean, I really think that you could almost earn a college degree now just by watching YouTube, you know. But in all seriousness, in all seriousness, you you can learn a lot by doing your own research that way. Um, depending on what type of, like, whether you're, like, if you're going to do, if you're going to sing for, let's say, a play, obviously you want to read what the play is all about. If it's for liturgical music, you want to make sure that you go to your choir practices and work closely with your director so that you understand the meaning of the song. What is the meaning of this hymn, and how does it align with the sermon? Because most of the time, when you're singing in a, in a Christian and church choir, the music is supposed to reflect the message. And in order to be a good leader, you want to know what that message is about so that you feel it and that you express it. That's awesome. Yeah, singing, I feel like it's it's so interesting. I love watching things like American Idol or those singing shows and how they're so passionate about the song and what it means to them. So it definitely connects to the audience, and it's all about performing and the creative arts. And it is fun, mm-hmm. and you're also impacting people with your your movies, like the joy that it brings to people. So I want to know, did you have a favorite actor growing up or a favorite movie, or, or is there an actor that you would like to work with? That's a great question. You know, as far as an icon is concerned, I would love to work and learn from Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, he's- He is one of my favorite actors. And he's, you know, aside from, you know, the Rocky, you know, he, he did a great job with Rocky, of course. That's his most... And he can... There's a, a gentleman that can play just about any role and do well in it. You know, one of my favorite movies from a long time ago was Cliffhanger. And the scene where he is with his, they never quite said whether she was his wife or his girlfriend, but it was after the, the, the friend fell off the wire. And he comes mm-hmm. back home. He, had, he was coping with that loss. And there's a scene where he and the girlfriend are talking about their relationship and the loss. And that is where my notice of Sylvester Stallone as a method actor really uh, came to being. And then there was an interview he gave with um, Joan Rivers. He was on The Tonight Show one time, and they were talking about how he 
uh, would study and would learn over how he self-taught. And this was before YouTube, of course. So I was impressed with that. Another actor that's not as well known, but he's been in a lot of movies was uh, Jason Robards. He was also, he, he was a character actor, more or less. And that's sort of how I envision myself. I think I, I like to immerse myself in characters. I don't see myself as like, you know, the big star, but I, I see myself as adding depth to a, the actors, the characters that add depth and 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 some meaning to, to a story. Th- those are the roles that I, I see myself in, um, you know, and then, you know, then the, the star quality can always go to like the Sylvester Stallones and the Matt Damon's and all of that. And then, you know, and, I, and I, I'm good with that. Yeah, I always pay attention to the supporting actors in films. Uh, whenever I leave a film, I always remember like that character ha- who had the one cool line or like the mm-hmm. one scene. So that's really important to play the supporting actors. Um, exactly. The stars can be exactly. famous, but like I always remember that that one scene with that one actor with just a few scenes. So yeah, that's so yeah. true. And there was one couple on TV growing up that always reminded me of my mom and dad, and they still do to this day. Did you ever hear of a TV show called Knott's Landing? I believe so, yeah. It was the original um, Desperate Housewives, but it wasn't really about the wives. It was about the families. And the original solid couple was Michelle Lee and Don Murray. And Michelle Lee reminded me of my mom. She was a brunette. She was tall and thin, and she could be real loud at home and run her household. And mm-hmm. and Don Murray was the dad, the simple, you know, the the caring dad, the doting dad. But he could come down on the sons for, you know, he wanted chores done. If you want a little money to take your girlfriend out to the movie, mm-hmm. that was my mom and dad. So those character actors who become famous over time are also two of my favorites that I watched in the 1980s growing up. That's so cool. That's awesome that you can see that represented on TV and that inspires you. So that's really cool. Do you have any upcoming projects you'd like to share that that you can talk about? Well, I've got several voiceover projects going on right now that um, they're on my IMDb. Uh, Jason Stefano is the director and the writer that I work for, uh, I do a lot of projects for, and um, I'm also uh, working on a project now that I can't talk about, but it's similar to like reenacting real life crime, but we haven't actually performed it yet, so we can't really, I can't discuss the name of it, but it will be on my IMDB shortly, so stay tuned. I love real life stories. Because we yeah, we, all, we can all learn from that. It tells us a lot about the depth of society. For sure, I always leave a movie and when it's really really good, and then I remember, oh, that's a true life story. So like those movies are really impactful because it actually happened. Yeah, because you know you get into the story, you know, and and if you don't have a lot happening in your life, you can say, well, I'm glad that's not me. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> what would I do if I were in that situation, right? It kind of gives you some clues. Okay. And just lastly, do you have any advice for wannabe actors or singers who ever wants to get into the entertainment industry? Yes, there's two things I would say for singing and acting. If you want to do it, you just do it. Make, if, you want it if you want to do something, make it happen. And then if you lack confidence, but down deep you think you got something to offer, take a class. You would be surprised how much confidence you can gain from a fellow group of student actors because when you get up, when you've studied your lines and you get up and you do a monologue, and even with the constructive criticism, your fellow actors are cheering you on. They want, it's like being on a team. They want you to do well. They want you to win your race. You, it, it's like you just want to get up there and express yourself, immerse yourself in the character, and you want to share it, but you also want to share in theirs as well. So take a class, whether it's uh, through a college or there's plenty of acting and studios out there with 
private and private and group lessons, and you'd be surprised. Those classes will help inspire confidence. That's so awesome. If you want to do it, do it. For sure. There's no need to be afraid. I, I feel like when we get out of our comfort zone, we find ourselves in ways that we never knew were a part of ourselves. And when, definitely when I've been to acting classes and um, did anything in performing arts, you find parts of yourself you didn't know existed. So that is definitely That's, true. I agree with you completely. And so do you have social media that we can follow you? Um. There's IMDB. Um, I do have an Instagram uh, at J Patrick Burns Official. If you want to follow me on Instagram, and I do have a Vimeo, J Patrick Burns. Sometimes I've been my acting reel is on there, and I I put up monologues occasionally. But so far, I'm, to be honest with you, I'm keeping it pretty basic right now. Sounds good. We'll definitely follow you on there. And sure. thank you so much, Jim. It was so nice talking to you. So nice talking to you, too. I've really enjoyed this. Thank you for share, you know allowing me to share. Awesome. You have a great rest of your night. You, too. God bless. Thank you. Bye.